my name is Erin Hoffman. I am with Sense of Wonder. Thank you for the introduction and for having us here. And uh, our core concept is sustainable, fun first, free to play edge attack. And our ship is sailing. And I'd like to take you on a quick tour of the future. In three years, we have a wildly profitable network of fun first 21st century learning skill games. We own the vertical of Bought by Parents for Kids mobile games. We are leveraging our player databases into augmented reality entertainment, all the Google Glasses. And we have aquarium, zoo, and museum physical installation partners across the United States. In one year, we just launched our flagship game, Reef Keeper, which is an isometric uh, reef simulation. Think about taking Fishville to the next level, where you're actually exploring reefs and collecting fish and bringing them back. And you have this cloud-based fish collection that you can access from anywhere you'd like. We've closed a 400K NSF informal STEM learning grant with our partnership with Education Experts. And we have uh, just tipped cash flow positive. I'm not sure if you can see our little graph in the back there. Uh, from our quick launch table of mobile games, and we are closing our first relationship with an aquarium partner. In two months, we're launching Snow Day, which is our uh, demonstrating our tech and education and also our commitment to fun first. Snow Day is purely a fun game, and so we want to prove that we can have this arm that actually uh, demonstrates our, our fun first commitment, and we are completing our STEM grant application. Our educational partner is super awesome. They're actually another Bay Area company that's an educational nonprofit, and we are signing with you on a mission to change the world. This is who we are. Uh, Michael and I have actually worked together for a very long time. And uh, I was a social game designer before that was a thing. I started uh, on Dragon Realms in 1999, working on text-based mods, which were incredibly social uh, and online. And uh, I then worked for GoPets, which was a uh, quite a bit ahead of its time. Uh, launched in Korea, was an international company, virtual world space. Uh, and I have an interesting story about a tree that I designed that was in 2003, and turned out farming was going to be a pretty big thing. So Zynga acquired GoPets because they knew that uh, we understood both free-to-play and uh, those monetization models, as well as how to make fun experiences that were global. And our deep bench of Ninja Rockstars is for real. Uh, whenever we tell people about this concept, all of our friends through our many, many years uh, making games, Michael actually, I believe, had his first game in 1991. Something like that. Labyrinth of Time. You talk to old school game people, they will tell you how much they love Labyrinth of Time. Uh, but when we tell our friends about this concept, they say two things. They say, could we make a small investment in what you're doing, or can I come and work for you? What we present is strategic leverage on a critical problem. Uh, if you know what's happening in educational investment, it's tripled in the last 10 years. It's a serious space, and it's only going to get bigger. Our leverage on it is that I think we are the only company, at least that I know of, that is a group of game veterans that want to very humbly but very uh, earnestly go into education and maintain that fun first, profitable, sustainable standard so we can actually make educational products or entertainment products that are self-sustaining and profitable but get a wedge into that education and involve educators in what we're doing and say, here's this platform, how can you teach with it? Uh, this one you guys already know. Uh, the free play social mobile future is here. The, the really important part about this is that we actually have been making these games since 2003, before they were really a big thing. We understand how free to play works. It's deep in our DNA. Our flagship is Reef Keeper. And uh, the reason why we selected this is because of the self-reference of audience that already exists. Uh, there's an interesting thing happening that these big games that were created in 2009, 2010 by some of the bigger players, they're no longer maintained. They were allowed to kind of slowly decay into uh, in, in the wake of newer games. But the audience is still there, which is why Tapfish, for instance, was able to break into that market with really a game that was not nearly as good as Happy Aquarium or Fishville, made crazy amounts of money, because the audience was already looking for fish-based games. The other aspect of this is that the educational component that we want to present is actually value add to these core players. When you take a fish game and make it more real, the players actually love it more. Whereas if you take something like Farmville and make it more real, it kind of becomes boring. This is what we are seeking. And it will cover the full development of ReefKeeper and essentially accelerate us. We are bootstrapping uh, our Snow Day game, and we're hoping to actually fund ourselves with it. We also have the NSF grant in process, but uh, this would allow us to actually develop ReefKeeper much faster and uh, get off the ground. And that's it.